I'm trying out a new setup. Usually when uh, I'm playing, I use only two monitors, but now because I'm not playing, I think I can use the third monitor to try and see like the spells and everything. So I'm gonna try that today. I think maybe we can swap positions. Where's my overlay? Let's see, inverts. Yeah, so we put purple on the left. Yeah, I think that's good. And then I installed the new Observer UI where you're gonna be able to see all the heroes supposedly and all the spells if it works out well, so I hope so. No delay stream. No, there isn't. You use three in tunnels? Yeah, what? What do you mean? Yeah, these are decent colors, I guess, to spot them. So we got the only NA team in this tournament, Kiwi Kaki, is up there. With playing with Insuperable for this one, their third player is OC. And down there we've got Edo Boy from Germany and Jehu, who's also from Germany, I believe. And this team came in as a replacement for Doak, Fra, and Lil DC who pulled out of the tournament. Okay, I got a message actually from them, from Pinker, saying that they wanted to play. So I was like, well, if a spot frees up, why not? And yeah, when I asked them, they accepted it pretty much immediately. Looking to prove themselves here in 2 on 2. Kiwikaki is going to be playing TC first. He's been doing a lot of that here in those 2 on 2s. I had a crazy game with Sonic against these two guys, actually. Insup and Kiwikaki, where Insup had really high level heroes, and there was a level 6 TC that kept stomping my heroes, and then Koinova would snipe Mark Mage in one hit. So it can be a very dangerous combo in late game. But it's not the biggest map, it can be action packed sometimes. We'll see exactly uh, how this is gonna unfold, but I expect. A decent amount of creeping, like especially because there's two undeads, you can't really get too aggressive. I guess Jehu is going to be the one that gets aggressive with Farseer here, you don't really want to creep that. Kind of stay on the TC. Not let him level. Yeah, we have Aura first as well, like the scouts pretty much show everything. I thought he might be getting a and he might go for some Razorman towers, but... Not quite. Ooh, the Farseer gets it. Yeah, this is EU host for first game, and then we're gonna switch back and forth NA host, EU host, NA host, EU host. Obviously, the NA guys are gonna be lagging a bit more here in this one. A player's forces are under attack. Wow, he actually uses Blight with a pull here to try and creep that. I guess some of the creeps won't be attacking all the time, which is nice. Wow, that's double searing arrow actually. On the Bone Fletcher. Gets a greater healing from the get-go. I guess it's worth finishing the whole camp because these guys must give a decent amount of XP here. Yeah, look at this. It's gonna be like way over level 2. So fast you actually finish that camp, TC is still on zero experience. We got a... Mana steal, wall mana stealing on the other side. Wait, this camp gives two items? This is broken as hell. I guess it's not the e easiest camp to do, but... All the way down there, we've got the tech on the way. QKK is still tech somewhat quickly, like he's going... He made three grunts, so it's not like he's going for the headhunter style. Every time I see on that basis without a nice star, I'm like, ooh, you're asking for a challenge. If anybody would attack you now. Okay. Chehu sees that Kiwikaki is very far away. It's actually gonna be very hot. Oh, he's not paying attention. He was focused on this. Kiwi is not even realizing he's under attack here for a very long time. They're busy creeping. Is this for real? Like, is he actually gonna do this? He has the war mill now. No. No way. No freaking way, dude. Ooh, that was almost a surround here. He's almost giving this away, but not quite. 
And Kiwikeki so far has felt a little off his game. This cannot be happening. I guess like when he gets the next one, this is gonna reveal that there is a tower. And like if he has vision even for one second, that's gonna shoot. Maybe ideally you'd like to get 45 defenses because then the tower is just stupidly hard to kill. And Kiwi actually is gonna have a war mill, so I guess he could start uh, a demolisher. They're trying to catch the Death Knights. Edo. Yeah, that's gonna be a surround here. You better TP immediately. Oh, he's waiting. That's bad. Yeah, you don't wanna lose too much hit points there. Wait, wait. Oh, he TP'd down there to heal up. The Expos are insanely hard to creep on this. Uh, insanely easy to creep, sorry, the center ones. You gotta be shitting me. No way. Why did he cancel? How does he have vision, by the way? Like, that peon is like all the way in. He should keep the second tower, because then, the, yeah. A player's are How do you. Attack. He's gonna get the demolisher, right? No, he's getting Berserker strength. I guess one tower is not that threatening. He's not getting fortified yet. It's, it's like quite demanding on woods. But if they even attack him, I would have made a second tower. I don't think he was getting cancelled. And then he can just cancel last second. This is crazy. Because that burrow is taking so much damage. And now they're going to attack the base. They're going to force a TP. A double TP even. They go straight for the burrows. Lich is going to be on the way in a sec. There is still no tier 3 started. So they've committed to making a lot of units. There is 4 fiends already in total. Shadow Hunter is going to reach on that location in a sec. Insuperable as a... Uh, Death Knight level 3. TC is not quite level 3 yet, but can land a big stomp here from the get-go. The tower is still going to work! <clears throat> oh my god. What is going on? Oh, he went Serpent Ward first. So no healing from the Shadow Hunter. Now there is stomp level 2, but he has no mana. Insuperable still doing a ton of work here with the Fiends, Serpent Wards. Will be helping. Lich is coming in now. That Shadow Hunter has a lot of mana to work with. That's gonna be a lot more Serpent work. TC is gonna go down extremely quickly here. And that tower is not even. I mean, there's not even anything to shoot anymore, but he has to remake Hero right now. What is happening? Death Knight is taking a ton of damage. He's trapped! And he's gonna go down as well. They couldn't quite go in here. They were like stuck between their own buildings. I cannot believe this worked. Like, this was so obvious. He started digging right in front of him. Okay, well, the, the fiends are finally gonna do something about it. And that's gonna be it for game one, guys. Okay, very convincing start here by the German team. The second map was... Okay, second map is going to be the consortium. Is, is their team Jehu fans or Jehu fan club? I'm not even... Since they're the latest team that was added, I've been focused on doing so many different things. Jehu fan club, yeah, okay. <clears throat> I 
I didn't even see, did the overlay work well? I'm guessing it did. I didn't pay much attention to the OBS in game, it's like way out of the way. So yeah, second map gonna be the consortium. We actually did vetoes before the series started this time. Just making sure everybody's ready every time before we start. Which Jehu old school? The name kinda rings a bell, but I'm not sure. Let me know about the mic, by the way. Overlay work, my name should be a cool extra, but guess it's harder to do manually, yeah. I mentioned it on top of the game. All right, let's go. They pick decent colors this time. Here we go. Yeah, I think the in-game looks fine for the most part. I had to like customize the the Walk of the Reforged logo up there, because by default it was like a re uh, Frozen Throne. Which I guess doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, I guess the only thing that's really missing with this overlay is the... the map name, but I mean, it's not super important. If you... If you open the Liquipedia page of this tournament, which keeps on being shown in the chat if you do exclamation mark grid or exclamation mark Todd 2 on 2, you'll uh, see the big previews of every map and then you can see uh, which one that is, I guess. I made sure that the previews are like very, very big on the page. Looks like a Torn Chieftain Headhunters this time from Kiwiki. Where, actually, where's the barracks? Oh, there it is. You start the war mill earlier because it takes a long time to get the war mill. In sub, it's going to be going for the Fast Fiends. Jehu with Farseer again. And Fastfin on the other side as well. I wonder if he's gonna dig again. <laughs> Imagine he goes there and he starts digging again. That, that, that was so shameless, you know? Like, I see that in my base, I'm like, do you think I was born yesterday? Like, come on. So, I'm guessing their plan is gonna be similar. Like this might be, like some teams they have like one main build that they practice and they go for like very often. So maybe Farseer, Shadow Enter into Serpent Words and then a big push is like their style. I guess having that tower in the back really helped. And yeah, Ki Kiwi was just not able to creep at all last game. Isn't there a lot of merits to delay the Torrent Chieftain and then just, or like rush the Headhunters a little bit more? What do you guys think? It's like when you get Paladin, right? You don't make the Paladin and then much later you add rifles. You try and time it so that you at least have some rifle when the Paladin comes out and starts creeping. Is anyone else casting this? Yes, uh, well played TV in Russian. I think he's using Reforged graphics as well. This absolute sicko. TC was like a long way from home. He hasn't killed anything yet. Wait, why do I not see the heroes? That's the overlay I was talking about earlier. Uh, they're supposed to be the heroes showing in game. Why is this not possible? Slayer's forces are under attack. Give me a sec. It was working earlier. There's nothing happening, guys. He's there. He's attacking your shop. Who cares? Okay, let's see. Clients. A 
player's forces are under attack. Why is it not showing up? Something's wrong. Players' forces are under attack. Maybe he'll know. I'm a little bit confused because earlier I tested it and it was working fine before I went live. Were the heroes showing in the, in the previous game? I wish I understood more all this stuff. Because now it's like it was supposed to be there already. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. Let's reopen this thing. I'm gonna wait until there's a little bit of downtime in, in the game and then I'm gonna do what he just said. Okay, there's gonna be a TP here. What the hell is that? Does that actually send you somewhere? Straight to hell, I guess. Holy shit. Looks pretty bad. A player's forces are under attack. Why is this not working? <laughs> the player's forces are under attack. This is killing me, guys. I hate technology. I restarted it and everything. And it was working earlier. Maybe you also need to restart Warcraft 3, I doubt it. Fucking hell. Holy shit, it's almost level 4! Insup is going on a creeping spree, boys. Alright, level 2. Yeah. Scroll of the Beast on the other side. Yeah, I don't think they can do the same timing as they did last game. Actually, Burrows. They're gonna get straight on top of Burrows here. I'll try after the game, I guess. Hey, it's a little bit sickening. Run, walk off here first. Okay. So Edo boy had to TP to defend, so it's the undead against the undead. But the orc is about oh my god. He took a giant beating from the crypt here actually. You might want to be careful about sending those grunts in. Yeah. It's gonna kinda hide them on the side. Ooh, okay, he gets a surround. It's gonna force a TP out. TC uh, doesn't have a TP, so he needs to be careful with the decisions of like where he goes. The creeps are really weird on this map, I gotta say. Have we have we seen this map even a single time before? I feel like not. It seems like he got vetoed a lot. It's a weird map. So what the hell is that slaughterhouse? Completely out of the way as well. It seems like uh, Jehu team wants to be aggressive, but they, did I find? Oh, they found true shots actually. That's pretty huge. 
TC is gonna speed scroll in. They see that they start running away. One of the fiends is gonna get isolated. Big Stomp is gonna end in the middle of everything. They could have gone for Shadow, I guess, even though he has a potion. Because he doesn't have healing. They turn around, actually. Oh, because War was used. They saw the roll, they're like, hell no. I mean, TC doesn't have any survivability items anyway. They can just disengage. There is no proper lockdown. There is no raiders to hold them in place anyway. It activates when you come here. He's actually getting chased in a corner here. Okay, there's gonna be a TP. I'm guessing he TP's here. Yep. TC needs to be at the front, but he's still gonna melt. You always need an inborn. It's so tricky to play TC. I honestly, I almost, I almost wanna say that it's overrated in team games because of that. Because he can still get blown up. Ooh, he's coming back from the other side. He's gonna get Cornova. Starts running away. And he's not getting the XP, that's the big problem as well. Yeah, Edo has no orb. In sub, those have orb. But they have true shot. The statue is in the back doing a ton of work. The tone shift 10 is going low. Oh my god. The Farsi actually died of Je uh, Yeah, of Jehu. And TC escaped. Yeah, they have too much here. Like, the army was, like, built to defend against this attack, it feels like. So many uh, headhunters. Why did he go armor upgrades? Like, the orb is so huge. The fact that there is no orb on the other side. In Super Bowl, a little bit derpy movement with the uh, fiends here, but they make it to the back. Death Knight is almost five! This Death Knight, this Death Knight is not even four. They're just cleaning up here. Lich is gonna fall, Torn Chieftain comes back in, stomps a lot of these units. Death Knight still has no TP, they're gonna go for the target! And you know what's being said right now somewhere in the world. Back to the lobby! Okay, I'm gonna restart War 3. So I start Warcraft 3 first, then I open the overlay program as administrator. If this doesn't work, I'm going to tilt, guys. You've been warned. Okay, Insup is actually gonna host. It was supposed to be EU host, NA host, EU host, NA host, but after game one, I think maybe they were a little bit tilted. They said like, let's just go again, EU host. <laughs> but now that they won a game, things are back to normal. So they, he wants to host NA. So I'll also check the source link. It may have changed. What does that mean? What source link? Do you know what's? Uh, do you know which overlay I'm using? Yeah, I cannot know while I'm not in game, whether it's working or not. I'm not using W3 booster uh, AP low winds. I'm using another one. Yo, Xlord with the host, thank you very much, mate.
Yeah, I have no way to know when I'm not in game if it's working. I guess I could load the replay real quick since Insup is gonna take some time anyway to host. Let me check. I wanna test. In the replay before it worked. Or like actually I created a custom game with like computers. Yeah, here it works. So if it doesn't work in game, like I'm not touching anything now. Then it's a problem. It means it shows in replays, but not in live games. But I think it showed earlier in live game. I tried with like multiple computers I, and I was observer. Back to lobby. It's in sub. Yes, it's in sub Kiwikaki and OC on the same team. Valorant is terrible. <laughs> And so we actually started with the second series because Kiwi Kaki wants to play um, his matches before the, uh, the the cup later today. The Back to Warcraft Weekly, I guess. Yeah, that was a much better game for sure by... Uh, my team back to the lobby. Three is Tony possible? I don't think threes is that interesting. I think maybe in the future we could do something like that. Like for example, I could have done these tournaments with eight teams, single brackets. And then we do three 2v2s, then we do one 3v3. And if it's 2-2, we do like a last match, ace match, one-on-one, -on -one, for example. But I don't think threes would be necessarily that interesting. I don't think players would enjoy it much either. So I didn't, yeah, I didn't choose to, to go for it. Yeah, I think threes and fours just start to become too much massing and stuff. I think actually FFA would be more interesting. I was thinking about organizing a high level FFA tournament with like top players and everything. I think that could be fun. good FFA players in it. Well, I mean, I would want the top solo players to play in it, right? I would want guys like Cash, Hawk, Foggy, and all these guys to play in an FFA tournament. With decent prize, I think they might still be interested. But yeah, FFA is so tricky. Like, There's too much risk of teaming and stuff like that. Okay, I'm moving the mic around a lot. Let me know if like I'm too loud, not loud enough, if there is popping sounds. If you guys tag me in the chat, I see it very easily, so... That would be a great way to prevent that from happening because I've listened to a VOD of when I was casting earlier and it sounded really bad when it kept popping and everything. Okay, the colors are... I guess this is a little bit confusing because it's on the left. I guess I'm going to invert this uh, thing because of that. Yeah, it's better like this because then you see the score right here next to their IDs and then Jehu Fan Club is over there. Even though on the map, the blue team is on the left. I think this might be a little better. Because otherwise it's confusing between all the overlays. I think hopefully uh, there'll be a W3 Booster 2 on 2 Observer UI eventually. And then that would be pretty sick. Because I think it looks better than this one, the, uh, the W3 Booster. And it has a built-in score feature as well. Alright, Kiwi Kaki, Torn Chieftain, Headhunters, yet again. In Super Bowl, same opener. We got a fast year again from Jehu, so... He's really not feeling the Torn Chieftain on his side. Yeah, 
double racks again, actually. I mean, last game it was just so perfect. Like, they just crept a lot. And to be honest, the Jehu's team had, um, they had true shot. But it still didn't matter. They attacked without orb against an orb. And there was a lot of units on back to the lobby side of things. And then it just held in one from there, really. So yeah, after this game, we got two more series coming. And OC is going to be playing with Kiwi Kaki. And then after that, Insup and OC will be playing together. Should be pretty fun. I think it's cool to have at least one NA team here in the tournament. They have two players that are on the East Coast, so they don't lag a ton. Ooh, they're doing the double road strategy. Yeah, I didn't even notice he's playing ghouls. And shop in the center as well. Holy shit. Wait, what do they attack? attack? If there was a human or an un... Actually, well, there's an undead, but... Can you really kill acolytes? They're scouting with wolves now. I think they're gonna go for the undead. I mean, against orc... If he repairs the burrows properly, you're not supposed to kill much of anything. Yeah, Insub sees them coming. I don't know if he realized already what was happening. But he's getting an Arabian tower. TC will come in. He doesn't have any heal yet. Because his shop is delayed. He went two racks first. Spirit tower immediately. Okay, Insub knows what's happening here. First call is going to be used. He's pulling the ghouls off the line. He needs to produce some units here. Maybe a ghoul. I don't know that you want to get more fiends against this. I think one more ghoul would be nice. He's going to TP because he was trapped. Maybe down there? Or maybe up there? Okay, on the top right, top left side. Oh, he almost had a coil, but the fiend goes down. Kiwi Kaki right now wishes so bad that he has uh, stomp. But he only has aura. And I'm, as much as they have a little bit of extra speed, it's not helping against this many skeletons on the ground. Do you know what would be sick? If you do this build and you get backpack. You get backpack and you bring two more roads as they become available. That's next level abuse. They get a surround on Insub's Death Knight who doesn't have a TP. And this time they're the ones, I mean it's NA host. So they're the ones with lesser lag. He does make it away for now. Okay, well he might be, I think he's dead anyway. They're gonna go for the dive but in uh, you know, on the other side. That means that TC now is going to get any experience for whatever kill they can get. And they're starting to be a lot of headhunters. It might be a good time to pull back here for Team Jehu. A player's forces are under attack. Yeah, I mean, in sub is going to be delayed a lot, but he holds on. I mean, they did what they could, right? We got tier 2 on the way on the other sides. This double shop thing is so abusive because skeletons are just insanely good. Is the game music actually on? A player's force. I feel like I keep turning it on. Okay, this map is really weird, like. You got two labs in the center, the tavern, shops there on the other side. They're creeping right next to each other, by the way. Team Jehu together, in fact. Lionhorn. Sentry War is gonna be amazing here. Just put it up there and then they see like a lot of the center. Yeah, Kiwikaki spotted them up there. Totem! Kinda towards the front actually. And fast tier 3 on the other side. In sub stack is like in Stone Age. Look at this. That's his tier 2, that's the tier 3 of Ido Boy. Did he trap him? No, actually that was close. Fast tier coming in. Kiwikaki is gonna speed scroll. It looks like he was gonna try and get away, but instead goes forward, gets one of those drones surrounded. That's going to be a little bit more experience, and now they can get this camp, and as they get level 3 here, that's going to be a huge power spike. I'm surprised that these heroes and armies are trying to do something about it. They're not supposed to be able to do much here. Yeah, even the Shane Lightning here didn't kill anything. Kiwikaki now attacking. He's got a lot of headhunters. They catch the shop in the middle as well. It might be a good time to buy the... Wait, he unsummoned one of the shops. 
I don't think they truly understand the power of Rose of, Rose of Necromancy, guys. And he's going Temple? Is he gonna go Necros? A ton of creeping happening in the middle. In Sup and Kiwi looking good here, because they're gonna get level 3s. They had a solid defense earlier on, and then after that, they went for the right amount of creeping. Didn't get too crazy. So he's going Spirit Walker and then training. They scout the temple. The building positioning is really far at the front from both players, actually. Even the totem here is like kind of forward, which is risky. Like when you get pushed, it's the first thing that's going to die. <clears throat> Edo always skips shop because he says it's overrated. I don't get it. Well, he made two of them here, right? Boots of Quelltalas on Torrent Chieftain. There's going to be a little bit of extra armor. I wonder if he keeps that. A player's forces are under attack. And Necromancer training. As well as the first Necromancer queued. A little bit of a one on one clash here on the left hand side. Jehu was under threat of maybe a Death Coil here. He's gonna TP, I think, yeah. Before he can get cards. Gets a Finn beforehand. Not bad. <clears throat> so just Grunt Walker. And then on the other side. We got Temple, he's getting a statue to build up his mana like really well I guess. It's always worth to get two statues here. For mana and health. It's like all the healing you need really in the fight, you put those in the back. Insup is still tier 2. They actually use Revelation? Wait, did they get Crystal Ball? Yeah. So he used Revelation, he saw the tier 3 and then he saw the Temple again. There's a TP, Falsier didn't really buy a TP yet, Death Knight has one, and TC has one. So only the Falsier here. And the Blue Orc doesn't have one. Yeah, that's just creeping like crazy, but back to the lobby has been creeping a decent amount quicker. What do you get? Greater Invuln? TC has a healing scroll and an invuln as well. He goes, he goes for the burrows. There is no fortified. It was on the way, but not quite finished yet. That's going to be an issue here. He's going to have to, I guess, yeah, you walk back like he was close enough. Actually, no, that's insta. What am I talking about? They're going to have to TP. And Fasty has to TP? Oh my god. They're just going to trade base. He's getting pillage. They're gonna kill the altar before Kiwi can get his... Is that for real? Oh, he can get his Shadow Hunter. I guess they have to go for the main here. It's not even being repaired on the other side. They have double TP here. They might TP on top of this army here. Oh my god. I think they're gonna do it, guys. Are you ready? As soon as you see it here. I I'm guessing it's here. If the TC lands there... Oh my god. Okay, Undead is there. Oh my god. <laughs> It's like so predictable. They didn't anticipate that at all. Now they are trapped. Falsier has no TP again, so he's like everything that he's got is trapped there. He's zero included. So they're just gonna have to take the fight. I don't know that these necromancers can carry. I mean Burrow in the back is taking them out with piercing damage. That's not going for another card here. They're actually not doing too bad given all things. The skeletons are being incredibly annoying. I think they're gonna force a little bit of kiting. I was like, where's the TC? Did I miss the TC dying? No, it's down there. It's contained. It's in quarantine. Hashtag stay at home. One more Nova will kill a necromancer. That TC is just chilling. Replenishing. 
46 supply for insub. 20 for Kiwikaki, damn. We got 38 for Ido. 31 for Jehu, who has to remake his main base. That fast here was like trap, by the way. If they had lost this fight, I mean, it would be over, obviously, but. Even if his Falsia got somewhat got targeted, he would have melted. Kiwi on 21 supply. He's getting close to level 5 actually. And Insup has Orb now. He finally made it to tier 3 after the rough start, getting rushed by double rod of Necromancy. Yeah, if TC gets 5 here, yeah, this could be huge. That Lich is attacking extreme. Oh my god, that stomp! Huge stomp! Kiwi Kiki does, does so well actually. He needs some gold, maybe. He's having to repair a lot. Why is he fighting this with only two heroes? I know he has an early frenzy, but... Necromancer! Death Knight uses a mana pot. Insup is having to kite like crazy. TC is so close to 5, but he's still worried to go in, because he can get melted very quickly. If I was him, I would use the potion now and then buy another. But I guess he's actually he doesn't have the gold. Another big stomp is gonna land! Here we go! They're finally targeting the Necromancers. They can kill them pretty fast, to be honest. There is a Destroyer. This could be the game changer. There is not really any anti-Destroyer. And they need to get rid of, like, these walls. Multiple summons. TC with another big storm coming up. He's delaying that speech call being used now. The Lich. There's a call. Oh my god, he gets melted before. And Farsia now gonna get targeted. He's gonna go down extremely quickly. And I think Team Back to the Lobby has done it. After a rough game number one, they get the victory.